Hey, it's Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about MQTT. MQTT is no longer an acronym. It's an IoT method for communication between multiple devices. It uses a publish-subscribe model, which means that things that have data that they want others to be aware of, they can publish it. And then other devices that want to pull in data to make decisions can subscribe to it. In the middle between the publish and subscribe is a server called a broker. The broker is the first thing we're going to set up today. There's an add-on available for Home Assistant that makes it very easy to get this going. First thing you want to do is click on Supervisor. Check your add-on store for a thing called Mosquito, which is the name of this broker. I've already got this installed, but the installation of this is incredibly simple. For configuration, I set Anonymous to False. And what this does is this requires any communication to this broker to have a username and password. By default, this add-on allows for your Home Assistant username and password to just work. If you want to add additional ones, you can add them into this login section here. For me, I use my home assistant username and password and I keep this as false. I keep the port to the default 1883 because a lot of software I've used with MQTT defaults to that port as well. Once it's installed and configured you can simply click start and once the progress meter is done you can click on log, click refresh and make sure everything looks okay here. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to test to make sure everything is okay. I'm going to use the Dynatap project which I'll link to in the description to test this out. The other thing I'm going to use is MQTT Explorer which is a a free tool that's available on all OS's and makes this incredibly easy to debug. To use MQTT Explorer, we're gonna add a connection, give it a host name. The host name is gonna be the same as my server for Home Assistant. So in this case, 192.168.1.3. So at this point, I've given the connection a name, I've put my host name in, and I've given the username and password for my Home Assistant. When I click connect, if I see stuff over here, then I know that the broker's up and running. Some of these will be defaults that are provided by the broker, for instance, under this dollar sign sys. Now my Dynatap project shows up here as homie 001. So anything I scan with NFC will show up right here. So I just scanned the Ryu figure. You see the UID showed up here. This shows that my broker is fully communicating and that I've actually published a message. This is the topic name. It's homie 001001 and then UID. This value is actually the NFC UID tag I scanned. So at this point, I've taken an NFC tag and published it to the broker. What I can do now is subscribe to this topic and when this UID shows up, I can have things happen. So let's talk about how to do that next in Home Assistant. This is the node red layout that we're gonna build out. It starts right here with this message in, and then I'm sending it out to a debug port here. And then here I do a little bit of a decision based on which UID shows up from the NFC tags. And then I call services to actually activate things. We'll build this out from scratch so I can show you how this gets put together. The first thing I'm going to do is create a flow called MQTT demo. In this demo, we'll search for nodes called MQTT. MQTT out is if you're going to publish some data. MQTT in is if you're going to subscribe. The first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we set this to the Mosquito server. If you don't have one set up yet, just click edit and you can point it at localhost or your IP address based on if you have a static IP or not. You're going to want to give it a unique name for the client ID. The next thing you want to do is figure out what time topic you want to subscribe to. You can do a hashtag if you want to subscribe to everything. Let's attach a debug node here and just kind of see what the data looks like as it flows. So what I'm going to do is attach the debug node, click on the bug here, and then we will select current flow only and I'll deploy this out. What you're seeing is all of this is MQTT info that is set to retain. And this is basically a dump of everything that is on my network set up for MQTT right now. That was because we used the hashtag, which is basically show me everything. Now, what we want to do is only see the UID of an NFC tag. To figure out what topic to subscribe to, I'm going to use MQTT Explorer. It just makes this super simple. I know that this homey device is the one I want to listen to, and I'm going to look for the UID, which is right here. So if I select that data here, I can click copy, and this gives me my exact topic I want to subscribe to. So if I put that topic there, what I've done is deployed that topic listener and pointed it right at a debug node. So now if I scan a tag, this tag had that topic and since this is listening to that topic as a subscriber, it actually sent that data over to the debug node and I can see what data came across. Now this is actually the unique ID for the centipede creature I have. Now I'm gonna scan the Ryu model 
and we see another unique tag here. So now all we want to do is do some logic based on what gets scanned in NFC. This is very similar to what you would do with anything that you subscribe to is you would pick what you want to subscribe to, what topic. When you get the data, you would decide what you want to do with that data, probably some logic, and then you would output the data to something useful. I'm going to use a switch function here. And I've now got both of my tags conveniently right here and I've got my payloads. So I can actually, I clicked add down here and I can say, if it's this, go to node one. If it's this, go to node two. Something I found that's super useful, if you search for comment, I like to put comment above here and say node one is the centipede tag. Node two is the Ryu figure. This just gives me a way of understanding very easily what does this switch map to because if you do switches that get really complicated, it can be a bit much. Now that we've got the switch, if I scan Ryu, let's see here, <laughs> I already forgot. If I scan Ryu, it's gonna go to the second node here. So now what we wanna do is have the lights turn on and off. So that's gonna be a call service. That's how we basically call things in Home Assistant here. The domain is gonna be a light. We're gonna turn, let's see, we'll do turn, turn on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is this, I have four lights in my maker space and this one's the easiest one for me to film with the camera. So uh, I'm, that light is an RGB light. I'll talk about this in another video, but it has both an RGB and a CCT, which is the varying colors of white available to it. So I'm gonna turn both portions of that bulb on if the Ryu tag is scanned. And now I will copy that and paste it. I use control C, control V, and I'm going to make a turn off of the exact, exact same thing. Now we will simply wire these up and we'll deploy it. Okay. Once we have this all connected, then the centipede, which is the top tag will turn the light on and the Ryu will turn the light off. So let's see if we can show that. Okay. So what I've done is I've set up a simple webcam solution here where you can see both the centipede and the Ryu figure. You can see the Dynatap solution here in the middle. And then here, you're gonna see the debug spew. I've got this cleared off right now. And then here's the flow. So we can see if we double click on this, this is why I do the comments so we remember. The top thing is Centipede, the second thing is Ryu. So that means this top node is gonna go up to here to turn the light on. That means Centipede will turn the light on. And the bottom one, Ryu will turn the light off. Now you can see it, it's light up here on the camera. So we're gonna take Ryu and we're gonna tap him. And now the light's off. If we look in the debug spew, you can see the tag got registered and sent across and there's the UID of it. All right, so let's take the centipede and scan him. The light comes on. And if we look, we see a second entry in the debug. This is the centipede getting scanned. If I scan him again, there he is again, light on got called again, but of course it doesn't do anything because the light's already on. What's great about this is at this point, we're using NFC devices to send MQTT messages that we're receiving off of our broker. Remember, these aren't going to Home Assistant software, they're going to the broker software. And then via Node Red, we're subscribing to them and we're executing stuff. I want to thank you for watching these videos and supporting me and all of the great comments. If there's something I didn't cover in here or any video feedback, please put it in the comments. Uh, I try to answer all of my questions. I definitely read all of my comments. Uh, a lot of the happy ones really make my day. So I really appreciate it and it means a lot to me. You know, I put a lot into these videos and one of my goals is to basically share knowledge with somebody or teach somebody or mentor them. And so when I hear that somebody else has done the project, that means the world to me. Um, if somebody has questions, I can help them. That's feedback that helps me get better. So. Thank you so much for that. I didn't go into MQTT as a technology very deeply in this video, and I did that on purpose. I'm going to link to a, a channel called The Hookup. And the reason being is two reasons. One, the channel's awesome. He has so many cool projects on his channel, and I've learned a lot from it. But also, his MQTT video is on point. It was so well done that I decided to not try to redo that video, but to basically take it a different way. I just wanted to get my Dynatap project um, into a state where people understood how to tie it into home automation. So that's why I made this video. His video goes in MQT technology as things like uh, quality of service 
and how that affects home automation and also things like retention. So it's going to be a very um, good educational uh, deep dive. And it's about a 10 or 12 minute video. So he kept his times really tight, which is good. And it's what I try to do with my videos. Um, speaking of keeping my, vi my videos kind of trimmed down, I have trimmed them down so much I found out that I'm not getting information or really my personality, who I am or why I'm doing things out. And so I'm going to add these outros. I figure if I add it to the end, then if you want the information, you get it up front. And if you're still watching at the end, then you're either interested in me, the projects, or where I'm going next. And so that's what I'm going to try to do here is add a couple things. As far as where I'm going next, I will make a new Home Assistant install video uh, very shortly. I have a friend waiting for it, actually. And uh, the other thing about that is uh, my Home Automation install video was very, very popular. It really blew me away. A lot of people really wanted to understand how to install HASS.io. Uh, at the time, but right after I did it, they renamed Hassio to Home Assistant, and Home Assistant got renamed to Home Assistant Core, and they broke all my scripts. And uh, so, refreshing that video will be important. And I honestly think the community could have a Home Assistant install video released every three months to keep up with the project, and it would just be healthy at this point. The project's changing so fast, and it's getting so good. Uh, I'm really impressed with Home Assistant, uh, what where they've ch made changes, some of the decisions they've made. I've also learned a lot since I made that video about supervised installs and different install types. So I think that'll be a good video to release. The other video I want to look into, there's a couple others. One is my, my smart mirror uh, died and I need to rebuild it. And I thought, what if I've rebuilt a smart mirror using Home Assistant as the UI, like Lovelace? And I just learned how to theme Lovelace, but I want to look into a little bit more to see if I can uh, actually move away from the Magic Mirror software I was using and fully into Home Assistant. Um, if it can do all the things. A lot of the plugins that I was using anyway as far as weather and traffic are already in Home Assistant. The trick is to figure out how to control it. And I have some ideas that I think will be really cool. Finally, the other thing I'm looking at is um, the Dynatap project I think has legs. And I was wondering if like you could treat this as something, you know, this could be a kid's toy that it has the NFC tag. They have Dynatap in their room and they use it to turn the lights on and off. But maybe you can give it credits and like that lets them watch TV for an hour or something like that or play games for an hour. And it would do something like you'd scan it and it would say, OK, I'm going to turn this outlet on for an hour or maybe the router on or something. I don't know. Um, but I wanted to look into things like that. The other thing about this is I think that there's this concept of what I call room theming. And what that means is, you know, we can do this now that, that you've watched this video, you understand how to do this. Say you have a movie mode in your house where like you, this is where you watch TV and you've got smart lights in and you've got smart TV and all that. You could scan a tag, have the TV turn on to Netflix, have the lights dim. Some of the lights maybe turn off, some of them dim or whatever. You could have a music mode or a reading mode where you scan it and the lights go to a certain stage and music comes on that's really light or whatever. You could have a gaming mode where like things get really obnoxious. Like there, There's all these different concepts of like a room theme. And the more stuff you automate in the room, if you automate like an LED strip, then that's more stuff you can add and change. So I want to look into that concept a bit more. And I do have an idea for um, projection mapping. I think it will be really fancy. So we'll see if I can put that all together. Anyway, that's where I'm headed with my channel. It's the next few videos that I've got planned. If you want to see those, please hit subscribe. And uh, that means the world to me. I, I see that the subscribers, I'm honored to see them because it means that people have cared about my videos enough that they want to see more. And that inspires me to make better ones. So I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Thanks so much for sticking around and I'll see you next time.